Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about conservation of natural resources. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So the IUCN Red List in 2004 documents the extinction of 784 species, which includes 338 vertebrates. 359 invertebrates and 87 plants in the last 500 years. Some examples of recent extinctions include the dodo from Mauritius, quagga from Africa, thylacine from Australia, stellar sea cow from Russia and three subspecies of Tiger from Bali, Javan, and Caspian. Presently, more than 50,500 species worldwide are facing the threat of extinction. So, ecologists warn that if the present trends continue, nearly half of all the species on Earth might be wiped out within the next 100 years. Hence, we need to conserve our biodiversity. So, what are the causes of biodiversity losses? First is habitat loss and fragmentation. When large habitats are broken up into small fragments due to various human activities, natural calamities or pollution, loss of biodiversity occurs. For example, the Amazon rainforest harbors millions of species, but it is now being cut and cleared for cultivating soya beans or for conversion to grasslands. Some of its parts are now going to be the grasslands for raising beef cattle. Next is over exploitation. Humans have always depended on nature for food and shelter. But when need turns to greed, it leads to over exploitation of natural resources. For example, many marine fishes are over harvested to fulfill human needs, which may lead to their extinction. Next is alien species invasion. When alien species are introduced unintentionally or deliberately for whatever purpose, some of them turn invasive and cause extinction of indigenous species. For example, the recent illegal introduction of the African catfish for aquaculture purposes is becoming a threat to the indigenous catfishes in our rivers. These African catfishes are brought from different areas and they are cultured in our rivers and they are killing our indigenous catfishes in our own rivers. Next is co-extinction. When a species becomes extinct, the plant and animal species associated with it also become extinct. For example, when a host fish species becomes extinct, parasites associated with them also meet the same fate. Let's talk about the aims of biodiversity conservation. 
In order to protect our biodiversity, we need to conserve it. Biodiversity conservation has three main objectives. To preserve the species diversity, sustainable utilization of species and ecosystem, to maintain life supporting systems. Let's talk about the methods of biodiversity conservation. Biodiversity can be conserved by two ways, in situ conservation and ex situ conservation. So what is in situ conservation? In this way, we can conserve species within their natural habitat. So suppose we have a forest here and in this forest, we have different kinds of plants. We have different kinds of insects, different animals, everything we have and we will conserve the whole forest. So indirectly, we are conserving each and every species within it. The in-situ conservation has several advantages. So it is a cost effective method. In this way, we can conserve a large number of organisms together. Since the organisms are in their natural habitat, natural ecosystem, they can easily adjust. Certain protected areas where in situ conservation takes place are wildlife sanctuaries, national parks, and biosphere reserves. So wildlife sanctuaries, so these are some regions where a particular species is conserved. For example, the Ranthambar National Park is the largest wildlife sanctuary in India, which conserves tiger. National parks, so a national park preserves fauna, flora, etc. of a particular habitat. So this is not specific for a particular species, but it preserves everything, everything, every fauna, flora, everything of, a, of that forest. Example, Kanha National Park. This is the difference between wildlife sanctuaries and national parks. Wildlife sanctuaries are specific for a particular species or few species, but national parks preserve all of them. Next is biosphere reserves. So these are some large areas where the wildlife traditional lifestyle of the local people and domesticated plants and animals are protected. Research activities and tourists are also permitted here. The largest biosphere reserve in India is the Gulf of Kutch in Gujarat and the smallest biosphere reserve in India is Dibru Saikwa in Assam. Now let's talk about this biosphere reserve uh, in detail. Suppose this is a large area. This is a large area. This would be your biosphere reserve. And in this area, you will have different zones. So the zone that is found in this periphery is called transition zone. In this transition zone, you will get some villages where the local people or tribal people they will stay and they will have their cows their goats their dogs their cats all the domesticated animals plants they will have in this transition zone but this is included in the biosphere reserve next next layer is the buffer zone so what happens in buffer zone, the people who are staying in these villages in the transition zone, they can enter the buffer zone to collect the stuff from the forest. Like they will collect honey, they will collect woods, they will collect fuels from the 
forest they can enter this zone and this zone is called the core zone in this core zone no human is permitted the core zone preserves wild here you can get tigers and they will be protected in the core zone this is free from any human activity so this is the biosphere this is the difference between biosphere wildlife sanctuary and national park so biosphere is in whole it is a huge area it is a large area next let's talk about the ex situ conservation so in this approach the threatened animals and plants are taken out from their natural habitat and they are placed in special setting where they can be protected and given special care so you will get some examples like zoo zoological parks botanical gardens wildlife safari parks in zoological parks we conserve animals but out from their habitat here we artificially preserve them in botanical gardens we will get plants so we can take some endangered plants from the forest and we can put them in the botanical garden and we can preserve them and wildlife safari parks we all know uh, we have seen these types of safari parks which also preserve some animals or plants etc